Hi, I'm Jordan Feigenbaum. I'm a doctor, powerlifter, and I've been a strength coach for 15 years. And this is Tech Support. Welcome back to another edition of Tech Support. I really appreciate you guys submitting your videos to me. It means the world. And speaking of the world, it's all over the world where these videos came from. Really impressive stuff. I love to see it. Uh, if you want to be on the channel, if you want me to review your technique, uh, send me a video. MediaBarbellMedicine.com is the email. Send it as an attachment or some sort of secure, safe like uh, link that I can download it from. And uh, yeah, we'll do it. Ideally, again, these things are landscape, not portrait. I know people like to film this stuff vertically on their phones, but landscape would be so much better. Also, make sure that your whole body is in the shot. I can't just do like from the hips down or hips up of a lift. I need to see all of you in the frame. And then for the squat, I'd prefer something from the side or posterior 45 degree. It's kind of oblique. For the bench press, I'd prefer something from the side if possible. Uh, and then from the for the deadlift, I'd also prefer something from the side. Those front facing videos, great for Instagram, not so good for technique review, but uh, you know, I'll work with what you have. And again, send them to media at barbellmedicine.com. This week, there's a ton of squats, ton of deadlifts, not that many benches, no presses. And uh, so I'm just wondering if anybody's training upper body anymore. And then also, where are the ladies at? I know that most of our following, uh, the majority uh, men, 75% across most platforms. But uh, I would like to get more women on the channel, um, do some more technique uh, reviews on their lifts. Again, just try to encourage more participation. I think uh, that's one way to do it. So yeah, uh, get your lady friends submit videos, and uh, we'll try to make this a little more equitable here on the Barbell Medicine channel. All right, uh, last thing I wanna say, we do have some new t-shirts available over on the website. The ma'am, this is a Wendy's. We didn't make that many of these t-shirts. I just, I've been saying that for so long that uh, our manufacturer kind of put these, uh, these shirts out. They're on our streetwear tees, so they're real comfortable and they look good and feel good. But yeah, most of them are sold out, uh, but I think we still have a few left, so I'm just letting you know here, if you want one of those shirts, we're, ne we're definitely not gonna rerun them again, but uh, you can get them. So maybe they're limited edition now. And we also have some of the streetwear tanks, so new tank tops, just kind of like end of summer, early fall uh, sort of thing, because people were asking for them. So those are available now. All right, let's pop into this week's tech support. We are gonna start with squats yet again. And I think it's just by convention that I go squat, bench, deadlifts, just like power lifter brain. But uh, that's gonna be the order. And again, we're gonna use this rep model as sort of our, the lens that we're looking at people's technique through to see are there opportunities for improvement. REP is an acronym standing for repeatable, efficient, and points of performance. Repeatable, what we're talking about there is that the individual should perform the exercise in a way where the range of motion, joint angles, velocity, tempo, and overall movement patterns are somewhat similar from REP to REP. Yes, we know that individuals are going to move differently from each other, and then also there's going to be some rep-to-rep -rep variability within an individual. Even in high-level athletes, we see that, see that in elite-level uh, weightlifters and powerlifters, even when they're lifting only 70% of their 1RM. There's significant variation in how they move. However, the reps should overall, on balance, be somewhat similar. If we do see a ton of variation rep-to-rep, -rep, um, I start to wonder whether or not there are better ways to perform the particular lift or task in a way uh, that suits the individual better at that time. The next letter in the acronym is E, stands for efficiency, uh, and that means the movement strategy used should aim to maximize performance for a given level of energy and effort. In plain language, what that means is we don't want the individual to expend a ton of energy to create muscular force that doesn't directly contribute to the weight leaving the floor or the task being completed. And so an example of this would be a person who kicks the bar forward on a deadlift and then has to use energy to create muscular force to roll the bar back into a position where it will actually leave the floor. So there's some efficiency uh, issues there. Same thing with like losing balance slightly uh, on a squat, you're, gonna, you're going to have to expend some energy to create muscular force um, to correct an error that doesn't need to be there that's ultimately compromising um, sort of performance. And so that's what the E stands for. P stands for points of performance, and that means that the resulting movement strategy adopted by the individual should meet any pre-specified criteria or goals of the exercise, such as a particular range of motion, 
velocity, tempo, muscle group contraction, etc. There are barbell sports out there, Olympic weightlifting and powerlifting that have these sort of sports specific criteria that can be used to make these sort of training decisions. For example, a powerlifter is saying, all my squats need to be below parallel to competition standard. All my bench presses need to be paused to competition standard. I can't hitch a deadlift, for example. You can use those for general strength conditioning purposes, but you don't have to be sort of locked into just those things. They don't have to be your constraints. For example, a person could squat just to a 90 degree sort of knee flexion angle if you wanted to. They could do a half squat, they could do a quarter squat. And in some cases that might be advantageous for a particular sport or activity um, or individual in general. Same thing with deadlifts, don't always have to deadlift from the floor. You're really just trying to select a hinge pattern that fits the individual's goals, what they need, and ultimately allows them to train all the major muscle groups of the body in a productive manner, um, allows them to get stronger, uh, again, load the musculoskeletal system and uh, is something that they're actually going to adhere to. So there are sort of pre-specified criteria for sport, um, but outside of that, particularly barbell sports, kind of the world is your oyster. If you're interested in a more in-depth discussion on the rep model, technique, etc., it was in the newsletter uh, that went out last week. Um, and so if that's of interest to you, go, to, go over to our website. There's a pop-up that'll come up within a few seconds. You can subscribe to the newsletter and that was in there. Yeah, a bunch of citations and whatnot. And uh, if you don't want to see that, well, you know what not to do now. All right, let's pop into the squats here. We're going to start out with Matthew. Now, I haven't seen these before, so first time through, and uh, let's see what happens. All right, this looks like a high bar squat, high bar tempo squat, high bar tempo paused squat. Yeah, and so I'm looking at the feet, making sure that the heels aren't coming up, toes aren't coming up. Yeah, that looks good. The knees are traveling adequately forward during the descent. You don't see them sliding forward at all at the bottom, nor do you see them sliding backwards a bunch out of the bottom. Now, I don't know why he's doing these high bar tempo squats. Usually I put these uh, in, in a program for like an injury sort of desensitization standpoint if somebody can't tolerate like a normal, uh, like, uh, normal tempo squat. But uh, yeah, those look pretty good. All right, this is Daniel. We have no idea what the weight is because they have the, the plates are the same colors. This is another high bar squat. I don't like that he's looking down right in front of him. I would look out a little bit further. He's in chucks, but the heels are staying down. I just think there's not enough knee travel forward. So we're actually gonna watch this again. Let's watch this last rep. Yeah, heels came up a little bit and I can tell from here that the uh, ankles are kind of caving in a little bit. And so, all right, we'll watch this again. I would move his gaze out. I would probably cue him prouder chest. And then I would also tell him to get his knees further forward and maybe out. I might adjust the stance to facilitate that. So effectively, the narrower the stance and the straighter the toes, the more knees forward you have to get. And not everybody can, can do that. And so a little bit wider stance, more toes out um, might be useful here. All right, next squat. This is Jay Kaiser. Hold on, let's pause. It's like 455 pounds. Okay, nice. Okay, elbows are up quite high. And the, okay, it was high. And the stance is, is wide causing that. Okay, well, let's watch it again. So, hey, good effort, 455, no joke. Um, first thing, I would prefer that the elbows go down so that uh, we'll just pause it right here. The wrists right now are in some sort of flexion, right? So he's using a false grip, so that's thumbs over the top. And so the wrist right here is in some sort of flexion, this being extension, this being neutral, where it's perfectly flat. Um, so it's kind of like over the top, like Rocky Balboa style, right? You guys are. Nobody watching this has seen that movie. My bad. Um, so thing one, I would want to get the grip under control because the elbows and the subsequent angle of the humerus is incompatible with a really uh, successful sort of squat pattern. Um, effectively, when the elbows are that high, you get a lot of thoracic rounding. The bar likes to move, etc. cetera. Um, shoot, I just clicked this with my big stupid forearm. Sorry, I just got done training, so this is, this is what we're working with. Okay, the other thing is the stance is quite wide and I just kind of knew based on the stance with that it was gonna be high. 
Um, David Wilson does squat with a really wide stance, and he's successful at doing so. There's a few other people that do it, but they are more the exceptions to the rule rather than the rule here. And so when I see somebody with that wide of stance, I pretty much assume it's going to be above parallel um, just due to the stance width. Just people aren't able to get their knees out far enough um, to get their, you know, the, the crease of their hips below the top of the knee. And so we can click play here. All right, now we're in position. Yeah, he's looking straight out. I don't like that into the mirror. I would look down. I would move the stance in, and then I would um, aim for another two to three inches of depth. That's what I would do. All right, next squat. This is Ed. I think this is maybe four blues. One, that'd be 180, so 190, 195, 407. I like this view. All right. Looks like a, a low bar squat. Let's watch that. Let's watch that again. So. Okay, so yeah, low bar squat. Let's look at the feet. Yeah, heels come up a little bit at the bottom. I think some of this is trying to stay a little too vertical during the descent. Let's watch it one more time, it's just a single. That's why, you know, so the problem with the singles is just that some of the stuff that you see is actually just artifact, it just, it's strange. And then you wanna know like, will the person correct it on the next rep? Do I even need to coach this? So yeah, you guys can take a, take a look at the heels. Just watch this thing right at the end. Just trying to stay pretty vertical with this low bar position. You only, yep. And you kind of see that the knees go forward at the bottom, heels come up, hips go back. And so I would probably cue maybe a little bit more horizontal on the way down, or alternatively, you can cue knees first, knees forward and out first, anything like that. And you can also change the stance width uh, and toe angle, all sorts of stuff uh, can get you to the same, the same place. But yeah, I think there is an opportunity to improve efficiency there um, by trying to get in a place where the knees don't slide forward at the bottom, the heels don't leave the ground, um, and then there's not that subsequent dip in bar velocity on the way up because the hips go back and you just kind of run out of mechanics advantage there. So what I would start with is probably just a little more uh, forward lean on the way down. Um, see how that works, just that cue. And if that doesn't work, then I would uh, think knees forward, knees forward and out first. See how that works. And then I'd probably start adjusting stance and, and whatnot. So, all right, this is Aaron. All right, so before this, Aaron sent me two videos. Um, one is a two rep set. And one is a five rep set. Her question here or concern was that um, she can do reps fairly well, but a heavy max effort single kind of psychs her out. She's concerned that her form breaks down on heavy singles. Uh, so she's included a five rep set at 235 pounds and a heavy double set at 250. So let's watch both, provide some commentary, and then I'll kind of talk about this relationship between repetition efforts and single rep efforts. Okay, I see the knees caving in a little bit, but... Depth looks good, but yeah, the, the you look at the feet, so the heels are staying down, toes are staying down on the way up. That looks pretty good. You can just see that the knees kind of cave in on the way up, which is not terrible. I would prefer the elbows to be down a little bit, but you're, you're seeing this sort of velocity slow down about midway up. And again, the hips go back, knees cave in. I don't know that that pattern, I don't know that that pattern is the most efficient for her, but it's not bad. All right, so now let's watch a double. This is 250. Elbows look a little bit better, uh, but they do go up on the way up. A little maybe too much. Balance is still good. Depth is good. Yep. Yeah, you just see where the bar speed slows down, which is not unique. I mean, the bar speed's got to slow down somewhere when the weight's heavy. Um, so I think the big thing here, I would probably advocate, similar to the last uh, guy we saw, she's going to need to get a little bit more horizontal during the descent um, because that's, we don't want the sort of um, change in position uh, that much out of the bottom. So maybe a little more horizontal that I would uh, probably start there. I would also try to get the elbows down. And then as far as the relationship between a single repetition effort and a multi-repetition effort, um, if you want to get better at singles, you have to do singles. And some of that psychological, just, you know, the confidence in, in, in doing it and you just repeated practice, repeated exposure. The other part is, you know, there are actual physiological adaptations that are pretty specific to handling weights that are pretty heavy, you know, maybe above that 85, 90% range. Um, and then we're doing singles because we don't want to accumulate too much fatigue, right? So rather than a three rep max, for example, or a two rep max, doing a single at 90% isn't going to cost that much fatigue, but the potential stimulus 
or the, the stimulus that you get is going to potentially produce a uh, significant fitness adaptation, like uh, an increased fidelity and increased uh, sort of uh, rate coding of the neural signal going from the brain to the nerves to the muscle so that mm, it can contract uh, uh, as hard as possible. Further, sort of uh, a, a decreased signal to the antagonistic muscles um, that would be reducing force production effectively. Um, that goes by the wayside. Also, def different uh, musculoskeletal uh, adaptation. So, we increased sort of uh, stiffness of tendons and um, different non contractile prote protein signaling uh, uh, adaptations that occur at the level of the muscle that improve force transfer uh, between muscles. All that stuff sort of happens again only at these heavier loads and sort of why we need to train those if we want to maximize the transference from strength base, right, the sort of base of strength you've developed in a multiple of different rep, uh, in many different rep ranges, to specific strength, in this case, singles for like powerlifting or something. And so for her, the squats are good. I love the balance. I love the tempo overall. The bounce is pretty decent. I just think it's a little too vertical on the way down. And so uh, you're gonna get that hips uh, swing back on the way up, uh, knees cave in. Uh, I think we, there's some improve, uh, opportunities to improve the efficiency. And so I would probably have her bend over a little bit more on the way down. I would also keep the elbows down. I might think about widening the stance if we can keep the knees out. Uh, and then I would practice singles. So, I mean, when I see heavy doubles, I'm like, okay, that's oak, okay, that's fine. Uh, but then if somebody was really uh, trying to go to a powerlifting meet, I would just do singles. This is Madison. She assured me this was not filmed on a potato. Yeah, so it looks pretty good. Now, last time she sent me a single, this is a multi-rep set at 205. Yeah, the real big thing here, uh, I would just, uh, Madison, I would just go faster. Go down faster, hit the bottom, stretch reflex, bounce out of the bottom. The faster you go, the, the faster they're gonna come up, and then also use safeties, just, just in case. All right, on to the next squat. This is Mir. Believe he was saying that he's got an issue with the bar not being level. I do like the spotters. He's got those chains in the thing. Okay. Oh yeah, I do see it. Okay, so on the yeah, the right side's lower. Okay, so one, great job. Got an Alico barbell. Creme de la creme. Nice, nice work here, sir. And then when I'm thinking about the bar being crooked, a few things that I want to look for. Thing one, is the bar actually um, centered side to side on the individual? Um, and so you'd normally look at this from the back. You can look at the smooth part of the bar and where the, the knurling starts um, and get a decent uh, picture. It looks fairly even to me, but I'd also want to make sure that it's actually sitting straight versus one side uh, up or down. From here, uh, I look at his elbows and I see that, um, you know, it looks like his left elbow, camera right, uh, is sticking up higher than his uh, right elbow, camera left. Um, and that's because the bar is sitting lower on his right side, camera left, <laughs> than on the left side where the bar is higher. Uh, again, that's camera right. Uh, and so to fix this, I would make him feel like his right side, the right side of uh, the bar on the right side should feel higher. It should feel crooked to him because he's gotten used to this. Um, I don't think it's particularly dangerous, right? Not, not really an increased risk of injury. You can get used to all sorts of different stuff. Um, but I would make him feel like the right side, the, the, the bar on the right side, it feels higher to him to get that leveled out. Because I don't see any particular like anatomical issue from here that like, well, here you're just gonna carry the bar crooked. Um, and his hands look to be fairly evenly spaced on the Alico bar uh, in general. And it does look centered side to side. So I can just tell that it's lower on the right side. So it would just make him feel like it's higher on the right side and it'll um, uh, square itself up. The other thing I'd wanna see is from the side, I wanna see, would wanna see if he's doing any sort of twisting. I don't see that. I don't see any hip shift. We'll click play here. Yeah. I don't see any sort of hip shift. I'm you know, looking at his feet. They stayed pretty flat there too. So yeah, that's how I kind of deal with the uh, uneven barbells. All right, this is a no name squat. And unfortunately it's right behind the upright. So I can see, I can't really see his feet and it's just a single. So from what I can tell, looks pretty good. Uh, nice tempo, nice bounce. All right, another person who did not send me their name but from a better coaching angle. I don't know that I love the tapered belt 
for uh, strength and conditioning purposes, but I do like that it's of high quality. I can tell the suede from here, it looks nice. All right, heels are up about halfway down, which tells me that, um, yeah, I think your stance is too narrow for what you're trying to do here. That's probably what I'd change first. Uh, and the bar rolls forward on the way up on that rep. Yeah, so I'd widen the stance. The toe angle, you can keep it. Um, but yeah, the heels are coming up on all these reps. Uh, it's just too narrow for what you can currently tolerate. The, if you want to keep it that narrow, you're going to have to push the knees even further forward and start get them there earlier so you don't have any momentum going to the bottom that's um, getting your heels up. Yeah, that's what I would do. All right, Jonathan. What is that? What do you think that banner says? No quarter? Oh, I see it. Okay. So this 370. Low bar squat. I mean, yeah, that's a single. This is a good angle, so let's watch this again. All right, so we'll just start just from, uh, you just walked it out. Yeah, eye position's good, posture's good. Heels stay static throughout it. Yeah, the only thing I would do is go faster. So I would set, get the safeties up so we're literally, like if you fail, you just have to squat down another inch or two and you can just dump the bar. But go faster, hit the bottom, get the stretch reflex, and you know, you'll be squatting, is that one? It's 370, 470, you'll get there, you'll be fine. All right, Jerry. <sighs> okay, this is, I don't know, what, it's in kilos, but we've got some weird plate stuff going on there. I do like the Alico rack though, with the Titex bar, what the? All right. First squat looks good. There's a lot of back angle change. Yeah, but the, the, the watch, let's watch the feet. Yeah, they look pretty good. The stance is just very narrow, and so that's kind of what you're gonna get here. So I would consider widening the stance to try to get less of that pitch forward on the way up. It's just, look, every squat that's heavy, it's challenging, is gonna start with some hip drive. You guys, I don't need to make the joke. Uh, which means the hips are gonna come up and they're gonna go a little bit faster than the trunk. Now, the magnitude of that sort of rise in hips relative to the rise in chest, it's gonna depend on the individual, their strengths, their weaknesses, where the bar is placed, and all sorts of other stuff. Is there any forward or posterior motion to the bar? There's a lot of other variables in there, so you can't just predict uh, exactly what's gonna happen. But in any case, every heavy squat out of the bottom is gonna start with some hip drive. The problem is with the narrow stance, there's a propensity of that pitch to get a little uh, excessive. And if the bar gets forward, of the balance point of the individual, which is approximately the middle of their foot, missed lifts happen there. It's just really tough to overcome that. It's less efficient, certainly. So I would start widening the stance. I'd go a little bit, maybe an inch each side, keep the same toe angle. And uh, it's likely uh, that your the resulting sort of uh, change in posture, change in back angle out of the bottom is going to be less dramatic than it is here. That's what I would do. All right, uh, we're gonna do bench press, but this is where I ask you to like and subscribe and comment. Here, just do that. Okay, bench stuff. This is Felix. What is this? 100 and 105, 107.5? All right. I personally hate benching with bumpers. I feel like it's weird on the barbell. All right, so he's got a wide grip. He's got a minimal tuck and then the touch position is relatively high. And that's kind of how this works. The wider the, the wider the grip, the higher you're gonna touch, the less sort of humeral adduction uh, or elbow tuck you're going to have. And so the narrower the grip, the closer the grip, the lower the bar is gonna touch, the more adduction of uh, the humerus you're gonna have uh, or elbow tuck. And so, yeah, uh, let's just watch it one more time because we only have three benches to watch here total. So things I'm looking for, um, it's tempo, particularly around the touch point on the chest. I'm looking for shoulder retraction to start. Yeah, so it wasn't really paused. It's more of a touch and go. That's acceptable though, but stayed on the bench. All right, now let's watch him do a set here. So this is 85, 87.5 kilos. Yeah, more touch and go. Yeah, so this is just a wide grip bench which is fine by me. Honestly, great bench press, dude. Yeah. All right, this is LSE. 
It looks like he's got a small plate on the inside and then a big plate on the outside. So is this 80 kilos? I do like the bulldog grip. That's pretty nice. Good scapular retraction. The pause could be, yeah, so he tried to pause on the first one. The second one was more touch and go. Yeah, third one was touch and go. The set wasn't bad. I just think like, if you're gonna pause, just pause. And if you're gonna do touch and go, just do touch and go. If you're sort of in that in between, you got the worst of both worlds. You don't get to get the stretch reflex from the touch and go, and then you don't get to keep yourself organized in a way to launch, heave, throw the bar off your chest like you would um, if you paused it. So just pick one, you're strong enough to do so. But the grip looks good, scapular retraction before the uh, each rep, that looks good. Um, yeah, man, nice work. All right, that's it. Well, we, that's it for bench press. So now let's just do deadlifts. All right, first up, who's first up here? Kurt, okay, Kurt sent me this on his 40th birthday and he calls his gym the House of Gains. Now, I, I had the first House of Gains. We all know that that was a medical school. That was a cool gym. And then Austin had House of Gains 2.0 when he went uh, to residency. And now I think he's on House of Gains 4.0. He's moved a bunch of times. And so look, you're gonna have to have some sort of disclaimer that your house of gain, there's either some sort of numerical thing, whatever. I'll let you figure that out, Kurt, but happy birthday, dude. Okay, so we've got some deadlifts. It's conventional. This is a heavy single, and he disappears. So good job staying over the bar and uh, not hitching it. All right, let's go watch this again. We won't frame through it, because I, I realized that took a ton of time last time. But the hips start in the right position. Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad at all. Only thing, I, I do think you could squeeze your back into a slightly uh, flatter position and pull from there. Um, but, you know, there was not a ton of movement in your back once you started to pull either. So, and the hips didn't move before the bar left the floor either. So, pretty good, dude. Happy birthday. All right, let's move on to the next one. This is Rita. Rita is sumo deadlifting all the way from Israel. So this is a decent angle. I prefer to be a little bit more to the side, but okay, that rep, the first rep, the hips moved up a little bit before the bar left floor. Same thing on the second rep. Let's see if she fixes it. Yeah, third rep is a little bit better. So now I'm watching, does the bar stay in contact with the legs the whole way? That looks pretty good, all right. Yeah, I think you could do a little bit better job pushing your knees out to get the bar started. It, they'll keep the bar a little closer to the legs, but these are pretty good, you know? Obviously, if you're doing, what is this, six or seven reps, however many reps this is, it's not terribly heavy for you um, compared to like a 1RM. But I just think to maximize your 1RM per performance, uh, again, hips a little higher than they were on that first, the first one or two reps, uh, push the knees out a little harder, and then you'll be able to uh, keep the bar a little closer to you. Uh, cool, nice work. All right, no name. No name deadlifts. No, I'm just kidding. Is this slow mo? Oh no. Okay. It's a single. We call that a ramp. We don't really call that a hitch. Most places would call that um, like red light it in a, in a meet. Uh, all right, let's frame through this thing. Let's get to a point where he thinks we think he's starting the pull. Probably here. Okay. So look where his hips are at and look at the amount of knee flexion he has. Now the plates haven't left the floor. Let's go forward till the plates actually leave the floor. Boom, plates are off the floor. Look how high his hips are and look at the amount of knee flexion, knee bend he has compared to when he started, right? So the other thing here is you see obviously his back has gone uh, into some flexion, um, particularly in the thoracic spine, uh, but also in the lumbar spine. Now I don't think that's dangerous per se, but I think that it does uh, mess with the efficiency of the lift. The, what you give up here, as far as back position goes, yes, you can get the weight to leave the floor, but then you run into a problem where lockout slows down significantly. Uh, and then a lot of times you either have to ramp or hitch or do something else. And so even now, this, I don't know what the weight is on the bar, but what I would do, 
for him off the bat is raise his hips up, get his knees a lot straighter than he thinks they should be, and really, really try to squeeze his back into some extension because I think he'd be able to deadlift quite a bit of weight um, if he improved that setup. All right, so now let's see what happens. We're just framing through. Bar is stays on his legs pretty good, yep. So now look at his knees. And now he has to get his whole yeah, knees bend a little bit more as he tries to ramp this thing. Yeah, there's the lockout. Yep. Uh, so yeah, this is what happens when you start with the hips too low. You Your hips have to go up a little bit, knees have to straighten out. And uh, if you don't do that all the way, you do have to round your back uh, significantly to get the shoulders in front of the barbell. That's what you have to do. So, all right, let's move on. All right, this is Matthew. Saw his squat earlier. I think he did that tempo high bar squat. Yeah, I mean, it's a single. There's nothing really wrong with that. Let's watch it again, just for fun. Yeah, for the most part, pretty good. Okay, this is Rudy. I prefer a full lockout. So stand up tall, wait for the applause. I can tell that the bar is off the legs, a significant portion of the range of motion. So we'd try to keep the bar in contact with the legs, feel the steel is a, a cue I use. But the hips look mostly fine. I don't see, as far from a height perspective, I don't see a lot of movement before the weight leaves the floor. It's just light, because I mean, if you're doing, what is this, eight or nine reps, something like that. I can't count anything over three. That just wasn't heavy, right? So good set, Rudy. All I would do, again, is just hold each lockout, do a deliberate, conscious sort of thoracic extension, um, hold that for a beat, and then also keep the bar on your legs for all of the reps. Feel the steel might be a useful cue there. All right, this is Tobias. It's a cool looking platform. I think, yeah, I just thought the hips were gonna be too low. See if he fixes it. Nope. Yeah. So he thinks he starts the pull here and look for the weight to leave the floor. Now, collar came off. Look at, again, how much higher the hips are, how much straighter the knees are. And I'm going to guess that the bar is not on his legs anymore because when you see that much movement, the bar just ends up off the legs. And uh, yeah, so I start with higher hips. I would have him cue. I would cue him to flatten his back out a little bit more. And uh, yeah. Okay, so this is the last rep. All right, last rep here. Let's see, he thinks he starts the pull there. When does the weight leave the floor? There, hips are higher, knees are straighter, bar off the legs. That happens with this much movement. So yeah, would uh, raise his hips up, have him flatten the back out. And then if you can walk the weight into the rack, it's not heavy for deadlifts, just saying. All right, this is Erin. She says, deadlifts feel good, but I naturally have some thoracic rounding. Doesn't seem to affect lockout, but I don't like how it looks. Any thoughts or alterations you suggest? Yeah, most of the time when we see thoracic rounding, if it's not like an anatomical thing, you know, uh, it's just the hips are too low. And the if you raise the hips up, you can fix the, uh, yeah, fix that. Yeah, the deadlifts actually look good. You keep the bar on your legs nicely. Um, all I would do, I would raise your hips up an inch and I would have, I would move your gaze out further. So 10 feet, 15 feet out rather than looking down. And it, you'll likely have a little bit better thoracic extension. It'll look better. Uh, but yeah, a little bit of thoracic rounding is fine, even if it's active, dynamic during the lift. Ooh. All right, last deadlift, last lift. This is Jiri. This is 235, 507. We call this like a moderate sumo stance. Yeah, I just see the bar coming off your legs. That's the only thing. And it, this may just be a newer movement for you, and that might be why. Um, so yeah, uh, the, it didn't look like there was a lot of hip movement before the bar left the floor, so it looked good. Uh, gaze looked pretty good to me. I just think you're gonna have to actively cue yourself to drag the bar up your legs. And so it's really gonna be like this conscious lat contraction, shoulder extension via the lats and you know Terry's muscles and other stuff back there that contributes, you know, people go into the weeds on, on stuff, but really you're just trying to keep the bar on your legs. Uh, and so you're gonna have to do that to kind of clean that up. But uh, yeah, it looked pretty good, especially for 235 kilos. Would just try to keep the bar on the legs uh, a little bit better. All right, so that's a wrap on this 
edition of Tech Support. Again, I'm Jordan Feigenbaum with Barbell Medicine. Thank you so much for watching. Do the like, subscribe, comment thing. And if you want to be on the channel, send me a lift, mediabarbellmedicine.com. We'll catch you guys next week. Thanks. Thank you.